My name is Emily Myers and I'm an animation artist. I have been a puppet fabricator for stop motion film, commercials, and series for 14 years. I wanted to put together a presentation to demystify the puppet fabrication process for those interested in pursuing a career in puppet fabrication, as well as for enthusiasts. I will go through and show you the puppet fabrication pipeline with some behind the scenes of projects I've worked on along the way. First, let's start with some of my experience. I have worked at Bent Image Lab, Leica, Shadow Machine, and Bixpix Entertainment. My main contribution in the industry has been as a puppet fabricator with a focus on armatures and silicone and casting and seaming. Some of the stop motion projects I've worked on during my career are Paranorman, Box Trolls, Kubo and the Two Strings, Missing Link, The Shivering Truth, Booksmart, and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. So what does puppet fabrication involve? There is a short but in-depth featurette showcasing the puppet fabrication process from Leica. I'm not going to show it here because of licensing reasons, but I will link it in the below description. Basically, what the featurette shows is a pipeline similar to this one. The process starts with sculpting a maquette of the character. Once approved, a puppet sculpt is created in a neutral prose to make it optimal for mold making. The sculpts are sectioned off into separate body parts, and hard and soft molds are created using TC1630 or GI1000 silicone. Next, an armature is made of either wire or ball and socket steel components. It is suspended in the mold and foam and silicone is cast around it. It moves on to paint, then hair, and finally costuming. Here you can see arm sculpts with a clean clay buildup and a foam core box ready to pour the first part of the hard mold. This is the finished TC1630 mold with a wire armature inside. It is now ready to be cast in silicone. Before showing you the casting process, I want to show you some more examples of armatures. This is the main character eggs from Box Trolls. I was in the hands department on this film making ball and socket wrists and wire fingers. Here's a look at an armature suspended in the mold ready to be cast in hot foam. As you can see, the armature has been spray painted with a gray Krylon coating to prevent rusting during the foam process, which releases ammonia that can tarnish steel. Here's the close-up of the main character Eggs' hands from Box Trolls. Once your armature is suspended in the mold, you can move on to the casting process. Here in the top left picture, I've started with painting in a thin layer of skin onto the mold. Then I cast the silicone into both halves of the mold with a curved nose syringe, place the armature inside, and then clamp it shut. This process takes a day to cure. On the left, this is what it looks like right out of the mold. It has flashing leftover from the silicone spilling out between the two sides of the mold. On the right, the arm has been clipped and buffed with a sponge on a rotary device inserted into a Dremel. Once the silicone skin has been cast and seamed, it moves on to paint. This is a picture of a zombie judge head skin that I cast using a three-part mold. The paint used is silicone, which is a long and tedious process. Once painted, the puppet moves into the hair phase. This is a process photo from behind the scenes at Leica. A specialized mixture of glue is used to solidify loose hair like you see on the left into animatable bundles that you see on the right. On the left, you can see research and development going on to the maquette of Lord Portly Ryan from Box Trolls. The hair fabricator is using a wax carving tool to help bend the coated hair into shape. On the right, you can see application of hair directly onto the puppet's rapid prototype head. The puppet then moves on to costuming and you are left with a finalized puppet ready to animate. What I just showed you was behind the scenes at Leica for feature films. Now let's take a look at some shorter form stop motion animations. I worked on a commercial at Bent Image Lab called A Glass for Santa. It is entirely made up of felt, including the characters, sets, and props. Felt is a popular material for stop motion because of the early films that Rankin and Bass created. It seems like every year there's a new stop motion felt commercial for Christmas time. I will link the commercial and behind the scenes in the description. As with all productions, you begin with character designs before building puppets. 
Here is the lineup of characters printed to scale and adhered to foam core. These are used as stand-ins when blocking scenes and used for scale reference when fabricating props and sets. The design of these characters is unique because the bodies don't include necks. We fabricated neck cups designed by Javen Ivy with the heads on plastic balls so that the rotation was smooth and fluid. This is my favorite character from the commercial. The armature is made up of KNS body blocks with wire joints. The horns are steel to give the animator a good grab point for animating. Now that we've discussed feature film and commercial puppet fabrication, let's talk about fabrication for a television series. This is Dr. Highbury from Adult Swim's The Shivering Truth. This behind the scenes look showcases the animatic and final shots side by side. A link is in the description. Every animation needs an animatic to plan out the action of scenes before production is in full swing. It's like a rough draft for the show. If you take a moment to watch the behind the scenes of the previous slide, there's a short scene that shows the boy's hand up close. We had to make a 200% sized arm for the close up because the actual puppet arm is too small to capture details. On the left is the inside of the arm with a clip foam buildup. On the right side, you can see the finished arm cast in silicone and painted on top of the stone mold. This is a one-off character, meaning we just had to make one of them. While there were many one-off characters in this series, there's no time to make every character as one-offs. We make several generic bodies like this one to create the cast of characters. On The Shivering Truth, there are four generic body types used over and over again. Average male, buff male, female, and child. As you can see, these bodies are cast in cold foam with silicone neck cowls and arms. Silicone is expensive and dense, so cold foam is used everywhere that you don't see, and silicone is used for the exposed skin you can see outside of the clothing. This is a female wire armature ready to be cast in cold foam. The mold is GI-1000 silicone with a TC-1630 foot plate. Once the foam cold body is cast, a neck cowl and silicone arms are put on like this. What you get after casting your armature in foam is a body like this. As you can see, the armature is totally encased in cold foam, and now we have a completely posable body ready for animation. Once that's complete, you take a silicone neck cowl like this one, that's the exact same shape of the body, and you slip it over the foam and glue it on. You glue it on and then you take the precast silicone arms and you adhere those into the body and then it's ready for paint. I want to show you how we make the body blocks on Shivering Truth. This is Hazani Walker's short film, A Christmas Visitor, and I applied the same principles here to make body blocks as I did with Shivering. This is my favorite part of fabrication when it comes to wire puppets. In this video, you will see how to solder hip blocks. You use wires to connect the torso block and the hip block, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make hip blocks. First, you take your KNS and you cut them to size based on the design that you made for your character. I'm using a jeweler saw and a vise. Then you drill a hole into your KNS pieces and you get a 440 nut and you solder them on. I'm using a propane torch here and tiny silver solder. You can see that little ball at the end of the pick that I'm using to glue the T-nut onto the KNS. I'm holding them down with helping hands while I glue them together. Once you get all of your pieces made, you put together your hip block 
as you've designed on your character design. Be very careful when putting these together so that you get the design correct. Again, I'm using helping hands to put them down to hold them steady. I'm putting flux down right now, which is basically like olive oil to vegetables. It helps heat them up faster and also protects it from the heat. So you heat up your entire piece. And then I'm taking a piece of silver solder, a strand of it, and feed soldering it onto the hip block. making sure to get every seam filled with the silver solder so that it's strong. Now I'll flip it around and get the back seam lines. This is a process called soldering. It's also kind of like welding, just on a small scale. My hip block got stuck to my helping hand, so I just heated it off. Now I've cleaned it, and I did every piece on the x-axis and now I'm doing the portion on the y-axis. This is a rig point, which helps the puppet animate in space. If it's suspended in space, like in a jump cycle, it needs a rig point so that it can be suspended. I'm taking my solder and I'm feeding it into the heat and being careful to get all of the seam lines. And now I'm done with the hip blocks. And once you're done with that, you rinse and repeat and do a torso block. This character is called an insecurity. I highly recommend watching the last episode of season one to see her in action, especially if you love felted puppets. On the left, you can see that I've planned out the exact size of the armature on top of the character sheet using vellum. The middle picture is the armature. The feet are over-engineered to allow for a shot that another character is standing on its feet while dancing. On the right, you can see the armature alongside the felted puppet. Silicone hand and feet are used. This character is also in the last episode of season one. On the left, you can see a bird's eye view of the hip block. The armature juts out close to the skin so animators have grab points when animating. Otherwise, they would be grabbing squishy silicone and have difficulty posing the puppet. The middle picture shows the curved spine. This helps in rotating the puppet when he twists his torso. We used this method on the first season as the lead animator preferred it. It's not standard, and I find that most animators prefer using straight spines. There are two plastic balls at the top of the legs for grab points and foam on the knees to displace the harder, less pliable silicone. On the right is the finalized puppet. One of the most special things about The Shivering Truth is the puppet heads. They're highly advanced in terms of engineering. I didn't work on them much. I only made one head mechanic. They were developed by Gabe Timme, who's heading up the puppet department at Henry Selleck's Wendell and Wild, which is a feature being released on Netflix in October. Here's how it works. This is a head from The Shivering Truth. They're very well engineered. You can open the mouth and close it to make it talk and emote. The best thing about these 
is the turn dials on the back of the head. You simply take a 440 hex driver, insert it into the hex screw, and turn the dial, which is attached to a string that's inside of the head skin to make it smile. And that's how the animation was done on the Shivering Truth. I cobbled together a few photos that I have to show a tiny bit of the process. There's a puppet head sculpt being molded on the left. This wasn't from the Shivering Truth, but it's a good representation of what a platinum silicone mold looks like in process. Then in the middle, there's an open mold. It was sliced open with a jeweler's cut. You'll see those metallic eye displacements, which are made during the mold making process with eyeballs and rods sticking out like you see on the right. Then magnets are placed in and used to hold metallic balls that act as the eye displacement for the head skin that gets fitted over the head core and inner mechanics. When the head skin is getting made, strings are cast inside to create the puppet smiles. This method was developed from knowledge gained on Leica's Paranorman. The Paranorman heads were more advanced, but techniques were gleaned from them to make the Shivering Truth puppet heads. Here's a behind the scenes look at Patrick Zung showcasing the zombie judge head mechanics on Paranorman. This is a head skin right next to a head mechanic. Here are the lip paddles moving. They are attached to a 332nd ball and socket joint. This is the head skin adhered to the head mechanic, and you can see how it performs for animation. This is Patrick Zung's design. He worked on Paranorman at Leica, and this is the final puppet put together. Now that I've shown you some behind the scenes on professional puppet fabrication, I want to talk about where I have taught, which is a passion of mine. The first tutorial I put together was at Bent Image Lab for Computer Arts Magazine. I created a short film using paper cutouts, which was on the DVD included with the magazine. In it, my collaborator Randy Wakerlin and I created a step-by-step -step process on making a short film with a down shooter and cutout puppets. The first class I ever taught in person was called Intro to Armatures at the Oregon College of Art and Craft. I taught students how to make wire armature and ball and hole armature, which is an easier concept than ball and socket. I used techniques I learned in a Puppets in Prague workshop. These are some final shots and process photos of student work. From there, I developed a class for Pacific Northwest College of Art called Puppet Fabrication. This is some student work. This is the beginning stage of the final project. It starts with a character turnaround. Then we followed the puppet pipeline to create the entire puppet. This is a shot of armature planning. This is the final puppet. Before this, we created puppets using blocks of wood. I wanted to keep the first one very simple to teach the basics. Students were required to make a lip sync animation like this one before the more advanced puppet. Hey, did you get the muffins I made you? Muffins? What muffins? Uh, I didn't see any. The muffin stealer. He must be back in business. I heard about him. I'll make you some more. Thanks, man. Be careful out there. Here's another example of a character turnaround for the wood block puppet. And here's the final dialogue animation. Oh, sir, uh, we're not really supposed to be eating the dumbbells. They're for exercise purposes. Currently, I'm teaching an introductory felt puppet fabrication class at Portland Community College and freelancing. I hope this video has been interesting and educational. Leave me a comment to let me know what you would like to see more of.